Parfa. Judith is an attorney, activist, and sustainable farmer. What I'm going to do is talk very little about water per se. These guys, frankly, are all far more expert than I am on specific water law or hydro you know, hydrology and all the rest of it. What I'm going to talk about is like, what can we do now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've just heard a lot of info. It's pretty overwhelming. And what always seems to happen actually on water panels, everyone I've ever attended just about is sort of like, we all walk out and it's like, oh my God, <laughs> what do we do? So I'll actually start with the, e I'll warn you, I'm going to start with the easy part and then get to the hard part. But I figure we all could use a little bit of the easier part first. So the easier part is really the short term part, which is we're in legislative session right now. And there are bills that are going to be affecting us both good and bad on the waterfront. Um, there are things Luke mentioned. I know there are other bills in the works. I don't remember if it's gotten filed, and Luke can fill us in more during Q&A maybe, but you know, there's a proposal maybe to um, have a bill that would, um, you know, uh, require, actually this one has been filed, require frackers to let people know who have wells within a certain distance, what chemicals they're using, so you can monitor to check whether your well's being contaminated. You know, these water bills, HB4 and SB4, are going to be huge. They're going to be what we call Christmas trees. Everyone's going to hang things on them. Uh, so there's going to be good, there's going to be bad. And it's a really good time to go talk to your legislator. How many people in here have ever gone and talked, whether on the phone or in person, with their legislator or the legislative staff? You guys rock. <laughs> that's actually a great percentage. I would have loved to see more hands go up, but that's actually a really good percentage. A lot of folks are kind of freaked by this. I never had gone to talk with my legislator. Uh, you know, eight years ago, you could, I could have told you who my legislator was. Didn't know. And it's kind of a freaky thought. So that is one of the handouts I have in the back, is tips for meeting with your legislator. And really, guys, it's really simple. And they like hearing from constituents, because so few people do it. So few people call them and not act angry. So, so lesson one, which I don't know that I have on this tip, is don't call them and scream at them. They like hearing from you when you're talking in a reasonable tone of voice. But seriously, they don't get a lot of these visits. They don't get a lot of these calls. They do want to know what their constituents back home are thinking. And they really do want to hear from you. Um, we will have a lobby day on March 19th, Tuesday, March 19th, at the Capitol, which is organized. We'll start off the day explaining how to meet with your legislator, you know, what's going on with some local foods bills, which I won't get into because this isn't the place, um, and then send you out to meet with legislators. And last session when we did that, it was really interesting. We had 80 people show up, and most of them had never met with their legislators, so you could almost feel the tension in the room. It's kind of like, oh no, what are you making me do? I came down here, but I don't know if I really wanted to be. And at the end of the day, 50 of them showed, stayed through the whole day, showed back up, and it was like, wow, that was fun. When can we do it again? I kid you not. It's that easy. It really is. And it makes a huge difference. It really does. I've seen it. You know, I mean, This is now my fourth session, and I've seen the difference it makes. So go in, make an appointment. If you can't make it to Austin, call them. If you could make it to Austin, but not on March 19th, I can help you with the process anyways. You know, meet with your legislator, talk with them, talk about the role of water on your farm, or if you're not a farmer, talk about the role of water on the farms that you buy local from. You know, what does water mean to you? What priorities do you think we should making it? And look for water action alerts from FARFA. If you want to sign up, I'm sure Environment Texas is going to have action alerts. You know, and find out what's going on with these bills and make those phone calls. So that's the short term part, and it's actually the really easy part. And I really, really, really hope you all take advantage of it. The harder part is the long term question. You know, what are we going to do about water? And when Cypress called me, I gave her some answers I don't think she really liked, which was like, yeah, you want me to run a water bill this session? We're not ready for it. Our movement, the sustainable agriculture movement, is not ready to run a bill on water. And the biggest thing, I think, is we don't have clear goals. What is it we would want from a water bill? What is it we want from our water law? And we know that there are certain problems, and there's a, there, there are some underlying societal views that really affect our ability to talk about this, and that we, sort of st we have to start tackling both in terms of first even identifying them, explaining what the problem is with them, 
and then saying, here's what we want in their place. So, and, and, and tonight's talks, the previous talk, speakers had some interesting pieces that I think illustrated this. You know, I, I remember the first water law conference, or water, actually, conservation conference I went to several years ago, my head almost exploded when I heard a speaker say, you talk about agriculture as, quote, a low value use. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what are you talking about? What's more valuable than growing food? What he meant was in terms of dollars to the economy when you compared it to the semiconductor industry or the electrical industry or who paid what rates for water, even compared to the residential world of water use, ag water doesn't bring in much money. Okay, we've got to correct the, I mean, those terms have to go away. We have to be able to say agriculture is not a low value use. It should be one of the highest priorities for our state and here's why. You know, in the talk and discussions we have about raising food and the importance of local foods and why we need to have a local food system need to be coming out there. And of course, there's the whole urban center issue, um, which is we're seeing vast transfers <coughs> of water from rural, I, I'm forgetting who mentioned this, but you know, I think maybe you did. You know, the vast transfers of water from, from ag lands from rural communities to urban. It's because the urban centers are prepared to pay, walk, to pay more money for them. But what does that mean uh, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, when there are no water rights left in rural areas? How on earth do we, you can't reverse it. <laughs> you know, once those water rights are sold, it's very unlikely those urban centers are going to turn around and sell them back. <coughs> so what do we do about it? But this does bring up an issue, and it's something that I have not heard talked about before. Or at least we, we talk around it. But I think it's time that our community as a sustainable ag community really sat down and I, I would say, you know, let's maybe try to create forums where we can really grapple with this, which is the property rights issue. As a community, most of us who are rural landowners, who are farmers, are very strong property rights advocates. Our attitude is we own what we own, we're taking good care of it, and it's our business. That, that's a pretty strong value. And we don't like telling our neighbors what to do with their property. <laughs> Um, and this, of course, the first example is the, is the rule of capture issue, and I'm staring right at Tecolote, you know, which is, well, yeah, but when they stick their <coughs> straw down and drain my well dry, that's a whole other thing. But then we, in this situation, we also have even more direct, indirect issues. So let's say my neighbor isn't draining my well dry, but he sold his, wa his water rights to a city 500 miles away. What if all of my neighbors get together and sell their water rights to cities 300, 400, 500 miles away. Is this something where we're gonna say as a community, we place that property right above all else? Or are we gonna be able to come up, can you come to an agreement that we think there's a limit to property rights? Is the, you know, that's a difficult question. That is, I'm not, I don't have an answer. I'm just saying these are, you know, this is where we need to grapple. And if we do, what's our justification? What is the, something, what can we articulate? What is the rational, logical, clear understanding of, well, here are the limits. Is it, are we going to take a position, which I you know, actually worked on years and years ago when I was doing water law, um, that you know, groundwater should be treated like surface water and there should be extra restrictions if you are transferring water out of the basically watershed, sort of the natural ecological system. You know, that's an argument. I don't know that that's where we end up, but we have to have those discussions. And we, and we need to really grapple with it so that we have a goal and objectives as a sustainable agriculture community. And when we have that, if we can build that over the next year, year and a half, the next legislative session, we can start talking about going to legislators and having a clear vision for here are reforms we think are needed. And that doesn't mean we get the next session, but it's the first step in the process. So I wanted to, uh, I, the, that really brings up, you know, there, there's the immediate action item, get to know your legislator, there are immediate crises we're going to have to deal with, and let's start trying to move also beyond those immediate crises and start developing a vision for where we want to be and, and how we make that happen. So thank you all for sticking it out all the way to this.